welcome to our vacation from traveling. Lake Argyle is the biggest man-made lake in Australia and best known for its infinity pool at the caravan park. It actually has so much more to offer and we ended up staying longer than expected. Packed some bags and we headed west Thought that it might be the best thing for us I was thinking about me And all the things that you leave behind Family and a peace of mind And I, I, I got you guys we are checked into the Karen park at Lake Argyle and they actually have a special right now you pay for one night and you get two so two for one <laughs> which is amazing another reason why we really love traveling in the off season so we decided to stay or we booked two nights and actually a powered side because then we don't have to worry at all and we have the AC cranking day and night <laughs> <laughs> all right so even though it is off season and it's not a busy time around here um the pool is still packed for sunset i don't know if you can see all the people over there so where are we going yale we are going we're gonna swim across the river and then climb up the cliff and watch the sunset over there <laughs> that's right we go across that arm and then across up the up the cliff So the walk to this lookout is actually a really pleasant afternoon walk because first you're on the side where the caravan park is and then you've got this thing here, this little bluff, that's also giving you shade. So it's shady most of the way here. So while everyone is fighting for a spot at the infinity pool, just over there, we've got the bluff lookout all to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have, we can't sit in the water, but we're still gonna have a nice picnic and watch the sun go down over the lake. Check this view out. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty cool spot. If you're around here, do the walk. It's only two and a half k's. It's literally taken us a bit over half an hour. Not a big deal. Alright, 
Yele, you're looking very expedition-like. Alrighty, let's walk back. Patrick, it's, should we do that cruise tomorrow? Look at it. I, I would think it'd be a good idea. Came in way later than Look, it looks the so other light. Cruise. It looks so light in the camera. But it's actually getting pretty dark, like, yeah, it's hard to tell on the, on the footage, but not a lot of light left. Well, we've only got a half an hour walk back. Excited? Very. <laughs> I'm glad Patrick has a good light. What do you reckon? What is it? Don't go too close. <laughs> it's brown. Yeah, it's brown and small. Could be a python. It might have like a cross edge pattern. Uh, no. No. Patrick. I don't. You're alone. I'm so happy we are carrying our <laughs> survival first aid snake bite kit. Kiss this one. He's so adventurous, hey? <laughs> <laughs> what? It didn't ha nothing happened. The snake just took off. Yeah, good. I saw it from far away. With my good eyes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright everyone, so as you can see, we're pretty adventurous and outdoorsy. So, we can't stress enough the importance of being prepared for the worst case scenario. This snake just went across the path right in front of us. Luckily it didn't bite us, but this is a 15 minute walk from the campground and another 45 minute drive to Kununara. So if something were to happen, these survival first aid kits are the only thing that are actually gonna save your life. So make sure you are prepared for this worst case scenario. So now quickly you talk about the kits we carry around with us. One is the vehicle kit, one is the remote and outdoor kit, which just makes sense for us. Then we're also carrying around the um, Ocean Warrior kit, which is especially for water activities like surfing. And then we reckon the most important kit is our snake bite kit. We, we take it on every single hike. It saves lives because when you get bitten by a snake, you have to act really quick. It comes with instructions, it's color coded, so you exactly know what to do. If you want to get one yourself, we have a discount code. Just use Pat and Yella at the checkout or click on the link we'll post below and get so yourself some kits. That's right. And guys, again, this is no joke. These kits may be $100, but those $100 may save your life. That is definitely worth it. Dam, we're here. Uh, that's Lake Argyle. The upper Ord River is down there. As you can see, that's a hydroelectric power plant. So, just quick, some quick facts. The Ord River was dammed here. The construction was cl completed in 1971 with this dam that we're standing on at the moment. The dam height is about 90 meters above the current Ord River level. And the lake filled up within two wet seasons, so it was full 1973. So as you know, we're usually not the Karen Park people, but look at that, that's our spot. Empty, empty, off season is actually quite nice. And we got a two for one deal. Yeah, so we paid one night, we got to stay for two, and we're hooked up to power, and we're running DC literally 24-7. <laughs> and we also just made um, two loafers of sourdough bread, so now we're back from our walk and we really have to check on them. Hopefully they're not burned. Let's see. Oh, look at that. It's pretty good. Beautiful.
This is something only blonde girls can relate to, and since most of the time we are in remote places, I made Patrick learn how to tint my eyelashes. Sorry, Patrick! We finally managed to get the pool at a time when there weren't too many people there. Hint, it's around checkout time. This is the real view from the infinity pool, by the way, for anyone. <laughs> Just wanting to know so you don't get disappointed when you get here. It's not a big cliff edge that goes straight to the lake. <laughs> not to disappoint anyone. As we mentioned last night when the boats came back in, we booked a sunset cruise. There are two boat operators at Lake Argyle, but Simon and Hills, our friends from the previous episode, highly recommended the Sunset Magic Cruise from Lake Argyle Cruises, which is located next to the caravan park. Oh yeah! <laughs> That's a pretty cute photo. Now, the female should... Swimming in the oh, lake, yeah. Are you going to jump off jump rock? No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous distance away. Oh, oh, the cormorant's like, no, he's gonna get the fish. Yeah, he already he's already so swimming. this guy, he can't, he can't fly away right now. He has to wait for the wings to dry. So he'll sit there with his wings out. Uh, so the boss says it's really cheesy to name the wildlife. So she's called Cleo. And if he's around, she's called She Who Shall Not Be Named. <laughs> Insects fall in the water! <laughs> 
be accurate for up to two metres, so if you've been shot in the face by them, they did it deliberately. It was yeah, deliberate. It really accurate. <laughs> so apart from these really cool seven-spot archer fish, uh, we've got 26 species of fish that pays for them to have an extra sense on their side too. They are covered in like pressure sensors, motion sensors if you will, so they can feel the vibration of prey in the water. Why is like it I said, they can it's the start point of the 10 kilometer Lake Argyle swim event. Wow, so I do not recommend that first weekend in May for a relaxing experience here. It's total chaos. But it's Cheers, everyone! Cheers! Patrick, that's why you have a full nose so you can drink in the water. Watching the sunset. Patrick wants to be cool, I'm not using a pool noodle. I'm not gonna share it with you. Sorry! Yeah, yeah. Some people have two. Beautiful. Cheers. There is floating snacks. Can you believe it? Yeah. This is so cool. Sunset in the background, floating in the largest man-made lake in Australia. <laughs> Drinking. Ooh. Drinking beer. Not alcoholic beverage. No, beer and sparkling wine. <laughs> We're going to call it as it is. <laughs> Check this out. Floating snacks. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> and it's just an old school list. Yeah. <laughs> Simple. Simple is good. <laughs> Alright, dig in, yeah, there. Grab I some can. crackers. I, I'm sinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need another hand. <laughs> Just put your beer down. <laughs> no, good. Look at this. Bye bye. W A. Yeah. <laughs> Three years. <laughs> All right, we walk down Jesse's trail to the lake just to have a swim. Check this out. This is a pretty awesome spot. Everyone's crowded around at the pool, <laughs> and we're down here all by ourselves. This is a really cool spot, too. And the lake is actually warmer than the pool. Yeah. The lake is a very refreshing 31 degrees. <laughs> Alright, Yele, going for a swim? Yeah. The plan is to head That's to Patrick's th plan. that pontoon out there. <laughs> what do you think, Yele? Nice and refreshing? <laughs> <laughs> 31 degrees is cold, eh? Maybe it's not 31. <laughs> we had to go for one last swim in the infinity pool before our vacation from our travels is over.
speed loop yes, around right. in that. We are hitting the road again. We had the best time at Lake Argyle and that camping was half price was actually making the whole thing more enjoyable and definitely more affordable. And now we are actually heading to the border, the first border crossing for Mogi. We're heading to the NT guys. to the NT. This is a wonderful, well it's a cool moment because we haven't crossed any Australian state borders since before COVID was still happening. True, yeah. And um, so yeah, it's a bit of a bittersweet moment. We're leaving WA. This has been our ho like our home pretty much for almost three years now. And um, but yeah, on and off to new adventures. Hopefully Places we'll we've seen before. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll be back. But we didn't want to leave our camera behind in WA, so we had to come back to WA one last time and get it. I'm feeling alive. Take me back to the jungle. Take me back to the jungle 